Hello everybody, this is Sarah with the York County Library. Welcome to another Stay Creative York County video. This is going to be a little bit of a different video today. You are going to need to have some prior skills before trying the project that I'm going to be demonstrating today. I'm going to be making a crocheted pencil case. This is the final product here. It has a button and a flap and a pocket where you can put whatever you'd like to in it. So you will need to have some prior experience with crochet. If you would like to get started, I would highly recommend the courses on Creative Bug. They have beginner crochet lessons and some beginner projects that will help you get familiar with the basics. So what you'll need to be able to make this case, of course, is going to have some yarn. I'm going to be using a worsted weight yarn. This is acrylic and it will have a size 4 on the back. I will be using an eye size or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. So that is what I will use to make the main piece. You are going to want some scissors to be able to cut your ends. You're going to want an embroidery needle so that we can weave in some of the ends of our yarn and also to sew on the button. So you do want to make sure you have a needle that has a large enough eye at the top for the yarn, but it's also thin enough to fit through the holes on your button. So you might need more than one. Of course, you're also going to need some buttons. These are just some that I kind of inherited from other family members who are cleaning out their closets. So here we have some buttons. And also we're going to be creating a certain length of a pencil case. Of course, you could vary it up. If you want to make it longer, you can increase how long you make this main piece. But I am going to be using a ruler to make sure I get it to at least 10 inches, which is what will make this one here. And I think that is all. So. Let's get into the video and see how I make this pencil case. So to start our crochet project, I have my crochet hook and I have my yarn. I am going to do a slip knot so I can get my yarn onto my crochet hook. I'm going to make sure to have about 10 inches of yarn for my tail. First thing I'm going to do is to do a chain of 30 stitches. So I am picking up the yarn and coming through the loop on the hook until I have 30. So there they are. Now what I'm going to do is go into the second stitch from the hook and start doing single crochets. So I will go through the stitch pick up the yarn, come back through, and have two loops on the crochet hook. Then I'll yarn over and pull through those two. I'll continue this across until I have 29 stitches, and there we are. So now we are going to, at the end of our row, chain two, and then we're going to turn and start doing a half double crochet across. So we're going to yarn over go through the first stitch and we're going to have three loops on the hook. We'll yarn over and pull through all three loops and this creates a half double crochet. So I'm going to continue that across and I like this stitch because it's a pretty sturdy stitch and pretty solid. It doesn't have a lot of gaps in it so now what we're going to do is continue to do half double crochets until we have 10 inches of material. So I've got 4 and close to 5, 6, about 8, and 10. So the number of rows is going to vary with your gauge, so just make sure you have your ruler handy. 
Now, we're gonna be doing the trim. We're gonna do two single crochets. We are going to skip the next two stitches. And then in the next stitch, we're gonna be doing five double crochets. So this is like half double crochet. We're gonna yarn over, go through the stitch, and pull up three loops. But we're gonna yarn over and pull through two, then yarn over and pull through two. And this will create two stacking stitches, and that's double crochet. Now, the fringe is the repetition of this, of two single crochets, skipping two, then five double crochets, skipping two, then two single crochets. Then in the middle, we will skip two, and when we get to that next stitch, we are going to chain as many stitches that we need to fit around our button. This is going to create the loop for the pencil case. So I have my button here, and I'm just testing to see if the stitches I've made will be enough to go around it. So I decided to add one more, and I want it to be able to go over the button, but I don't want it to be very loose. So just depending on the button that you have, you might need to have more stitches for your loop, you might have to have fewer stitches for your loop. So just make sure to test it out before you finish the row. Then the row continues, and it's a little hard to describe this fringe. There is a pattern in the description below. So make sure to check it out. If you feel confident, if you want to change up the fringe on the top, just remember that you have 29 stitches across. One of those stitches is for the loop, so you have 28 stitches. So if you can find a different fringe that you can repeat um, within 28 stitches, then you can use that. off with the two single crochets in the last two stitches. I'm going to cut my yarn and pull the yarn through the loop, which will finish it off. I'm then going to weave that end into the work so you can't see it. I'm going to use this embroidery needle. I have a needle threader to help me out. I'm just going to hide it along the edge of the project. So that people cannot see it. This is why it's important not to cut too short, because you want to be able to weave in the end. So now that I have that out, I'll just pull it out a little bit and clip it so it retracts back in. And there's our edge. So now we have our main piece. I am going to fold it. This is when you can decide how big you want the flap to be at the top. So you're going to bring the bottom of your project up and see how big you want that flap. So you could make it longer or shorter. But you do want to make it long enough that it doesn't want to pull away from the button. I'm going for an inch and a half. And I am using the tail from the end of our project and our embroidery needle to sew up the side. So I'm just pulling through and doing a whip stitch on the edge. So I'm starting in the front, going to the back, then coming back to the front, going through the back. And I'll do this along the entire edge. And this is why we keep that tail long. We can then use it to close up one of the ends. When we reach the bottom, we are going to tie off our yarn to keep it secure and in place. So I'm just going to loop it through itself to do a knot, and then I'll take my embroidery needle and take that
that little bit of thread and hide it by weaving it into the bottom. You can also pull it through to the inside if you don't mind the loose end sticking out in the inside. Or if you're feeling extra crafty, you could decide to make a fabric lining for this and hide the ends on the inside. So for the other side, I'm just gonna cut out a length of string that is at least three or two times the length of the side. I'm gonna use my needle threader. So we're going to actually tie it off at the top. I'm gonna make sure I line up the row so I'm sewing it at the same row that the other one has been sewn at. So I pull the string through both, tie it off, and then I do a whip stitch like I did with the other side. The only difference with this is that you will have to weave in the tail at the top since you tied it off to secure it in place. But it is the same stitch along the outside and then the same method will be used to finish it at the bottom. small book of Sudoku <laughs> and a pen and some headphones and my phone but I'm filming on it so I can't put it in there and now I have this super cute little case and what I like about this project is if I want to make it longer or for certain items that are a little bigger I can vary up the number of stitches across to make it either wider or I can make it more narrow and then if I want to make it a bigger piece or a longer piece, something that could fit more depth, I can just put more rows of the half double crochet. That's what I like about this. 
and I also like that you can change the trim at the top if you want to. You could also decide that you want to put a little loop on the edges and put more buttons across. I also thought that this would be a really interesting way to give presents, a way to make a handmade item for someone and they can keep the thing that it comes in or you can reuse it. So I hope that you had a fun today and I hope you do try crochet or maybe if you knit you could um, do a different version of this. And I hope that you check out Creative Blog and learn how to crochet. So that's the end of our video today. Uh, remember to stay cool, stay safe, and as always, stay creative, your county. Thank you.